I've written a few stories before about my psychotic mother and how wonderful my mother-in-law is. My ex-husband, Bill, and I have been dealing with quite a lot of stress lately. We took a trip to another state to look at houses and talked with a real estate agent. We finally landed on a place and were in the initial stages of purchasing a place. Over the last week, Bill and I have talked at length about our relationship. With all of the therapy we've been getting and lots of encouragement from my in-laws, we decided to get remarried and start over. We decided on another small ceremony, but this time I let my mother-in-law plan it out, so it's going to be in a church. Luckily, their pastor friend agreed to officiate on short notice. I'm not religious, but my in-laws are totally okay with that, and their only request was for me and brother-in-law to get married in a church. I agreed, as it's not that big of a deal to me, but everything to them, so I'm happy to make them happy. You would think that this is where the happy ending part comes, right? Wrong. My mother-in-law's, now former, friend Karen, that's actually her ducking name, and she behaves, looks, and thinks just like a typical Karen would just my ducking luck, is throwing a fit over the pettiest of reasons. Karen's daughter, Barbara, not real name, is supposed to be getting married that same week and in the same church and can't possibly deal with two weddings happening on two different ducking days of that week and demanded that Bill and I change the date to two months later. By that point, me, Bill, and my son will be in another state in our new house, so this is impossible. Karen is also going crazy over the color scheme. I love red and purple and wanted those colors. Barbara loves red. Barbara couldn't give a fiddler stinking duck that I like the same color as her and has told me that Karen is a drama queen and tries living vicariously through her own daughter because her own life was absolute crap. Barbara and her own fiance were no contact with Karen for many years but decided to let her back in because they are getting married. Barbara and I discovered that we both like a lot of the same things, so we are friends. Barbara was mostly raised by her grandparents, so she's not an entitled crap slinger like Karen. Thank God. Me and her are friends, and we are having fun comparing things about our up-and-coming weddings. Even joked about a double wedding, to which Karen threw a colossal fit over. The last few days have been really stressful, and my father-in-law and mother-in-law came to our house crying, saying that she and Karen were no longer on good terms. When I asked why, she told me that while the two of them were discussing some details about the weddings, Karen lost her crap over the flowers. I wanted red roses and whatever purple flowers. I wasn't picky. Choosing beggar Karen had only paid for half the amount of the red roses needed for Barbara's wedding when she learned I was getting red roses and demanded mother-in-law give the roses to her and I could just go with something else. Mother-in-law had already laid out a lot for the roses and told Karen no. Karen, of course, lost her ducking mind and accused mother-in-law of trying to destroy Barbara's big day. Father-in-law tried talking Karen down, but Karen began screaming at him and he and mother-in-law left. After reading so many posts on here about password protecting my wedding services, I'm glad I had the foresight to do the same. Karen had tried calling the floral company, bakery, and even the church to cancel my wedding twice this week, but didn't know the password. I know it was her because she's the only one that doesn't want me to get married in that church, have those flowers, or even that cake. Because Karen's mouth works before her brain does, she complained to others about not being able to sabotage my wedding. Barbara, of course, found out and finally had enough with Karen's crap and took control over everything about her wedding, cutting Karen out of any and all planning. Of course, this sent Karen into a full-blown tirade, and she canceled every service she paid for, leaving Barbara and her fiancé, Dave, with nothing for their wedding. After talking with Bill and my in-laws, we invited Barbara and Dave to do that double wedding we had joked about, and the two are ecstatic and accepted. Karen must have expected Barbara to come crawling back with apologies and butt-kissing because she became certifiably insane and threw the world's largest tantrum when she heard about our new plans. We have agreed to rent our house to Barbara and Dave after we move so they can have a nice place to live, and for now, we are letting them stay in our guest room while we pack. Karen tried breaking in, and because of previous experiences I've dealt with, I have a great security system, complete with cameras and a ring doorbell. Karen has since been ordered to stay away, and is only allowed at the wedding as a guest, and not part of the wedding. 
She blames me and mother-in-law for all of this, and that's just fine with us. I told Karen that if she had relaxed and stopped being a crazy bee, that she would get to be a part of all the fun things with mother-in-law, Barbara and I, but her behavior has gotten to the point where no one wants anything to do with her. Karen still calls the services, hoping to strike lucky on one canceling, but she can't guess the password, so our wedding is secure. Mother-in-law and I are becoming so close, she wants me to call her mom. Bill and Dave have become friends, and the four of us are making plans for them to come visit us in the fall after we move. My in-laws are also going to spend Christmas and New Year's with us. Bill and I have already decided that we are going to try and have a baby after we are married and settled into our new home. The wedding is next month. Barbara and I have decided to get matching wedding dresses, but one has a purple sash, the other has red, but we are trading shoes. I will have red shoes with the purple sash, and she will have purple shoes with the red sash, as a token of our blossoming friendship. Edit So me, Barbara, Dave, and Bill are sitting on the couch, eating takeout and watching TV, when we heard loud banging on the door. I checked my ring doorbell camera on my phone, and guess who's out there? Karen. She's screaming into my doorbell, demanding that Barbara come outside. I just told her that if she doesn't leave, I'm calling the police. Cue the tears and wailing. Karen demanded to know why I was being so mean to her and began pacing back and forth on my porch. By that point, the four of us were watching my phone. The more she paced, the more amped up she was getting. We could hear her talking to herself and getting angrier until she stopped and grabbed fistfuls of her own hair and began screaming at my front door. She kicked at it and screamed for Barbara to get outside, or she would K her. So I called the police. Police came and arrested her for trespassing and attempted breaking and entering. Barbara and Dave are now going full no contact again and uninvited Karen to the wedding. This happened less than an hour ago. Edit 2 Bill declared that he wants Dave and Barbara to come live with us in another state, believing that the four of us should lean on each other more than separate at this time. I know I am safe from my own mother, but Karen isn't in jail. She might be after earlier, but I don't know if she will stay there, and could cause some crap at any time. I'm thanking my lucky stars that I gave that man another chance, because I cannot imagine a life without him. I can't wait to be his wife again, can't wait to have kids with him, and have a real home with him away from all the insanity in this crap hole of our place. We're also going to be talking to our security team tomorrow about being on their A-game in case Karen tries to show up. We're hoping we don't hear anything from her. One more month to go until the wedding. Third edit. Barbara was in the kitchen when her phone started blowing up from an unknown number. It was Karen. According to the voicemail, Karen had bailed herself out and was pissed about getting arrested and is planning on suing me, Bill, Dave, and the cops who came here last night. We all had a good laugh about it. Barbara blocked the phone number, and we all went back to what we all were doing. We aren't worried. Karen will be laughed out of court. Now, the four of us are arguing about what's uglier, vaginas or penises. And it's me and Barbara versus the guys. <laughs> the hilarity of this conversation. To mess with Karen, add a new second password of Duck You Karen to your vendors, so should she guess right, she still needs to guess again. Or be an adult and boring and get a restraining order. Why would Karen even care if someone else was getting married the same week to begin with? It's not like she was invited. I have two entitled aunts, let's call them Mary and Terry, and grandmother on my mom's side that have been a thorn in my family's side for decades now. This started back around 1998. I was roughly around 10 years old when I finally realized their true colors. Around that time, my parents had a falling out that ended in divorce. Mutual overall, I lived with my mom, brother lived with my dad, till later. My mom got the house we had lived in after the split. For reference, it was a small two-bedroom, one-bath house. Some backstory on the kind of people my aunts are. My mom was a recovering alcoholic at the time, about three years sober, and we were at my grandmother's house for Christmas. Some facts about my mom. She's highly allergic to birds and could easily be tempted into drinking at the time. Both facts were well known by her sisters. We start opening presents, and my mother's first present was from Mary. A lovely pair of gloves, with real feathers on the wrist area on them, 
Great choice there. The following present was from Terry to my mom. A bottle of wine. How thoughtful for a recovering alcoholic. After we finished opening up presents, my mom confronted them about both items, which they naturally played the, oh my, we didn't know that card, and my grandmother said it's not a big deal, and that my mom should be thankful for what she got. They continued to do small jabs like this, playing the victim card over the years. A couple years after the divorce, 2000-ish, my mom couldn't manage the house payments with the job she had anymore, and decided we needed to move a few cities over. Unfortunately, she also decided to ask my grandmother, grandfather for help selling her house because they were both in the retail field and she figured they'd help her out with the fees, paperwork, etc. Which they did, help with, and more. More on that later. We moved into the new house about eight years later after a decent amount of family drama. My parents remarried and we were living in a townhouse not too far from where we had originally moved after selling the first house. Mary's time to shine. My dad had never been fond of either of my mom's sisters and usually didn't give them the time of day in most cases. One day out of the blue, Mary decided she was going to invite herself over to our house without even a phone call, which was odd because she lived over an hour away from us at the time. She arrived and graced us with her presence. Drop everything you were doing and pay attention to me mentally. I was, still am, an avid gamer at the time and I was in the middle of an event on the game I was playing, so I decided to continue playing even after finding out she had arrived. Obviously, this was not to Mary's liking and proceeded to make it known by both my parents, saying that, how can he keep playing that game when I'm here? Which my dad apparently replied with, well, you weren't invited nor let us know you'd be coming over to begin with, and he's doing something already. She did not like that. Rage mode activated. Well, he's got no life and he's always sitting on that stupid computer playing games. You guys are setting him up for failure. Mind you, I was a straight-A student, four-year letterman in three different sports at the time. I heard the arguing, but figured it was just the normal crap she would cause every once in a while, so I kept playing my game. Until I heard my parents yelling something along the lines of, Don't ever effing come back here! While slamming the door on Mary's face. Apparently, she didn't like that and went straight to my grandmother's to complain and play the victim card, which naturally always worked. A few uneventful phone calls followed that day, but nothing came from it, other than she wasn't allowed over anymore, thank God. Adding this because I found it hilarious back then. When AOL was the thing to use for the internet back then, it would run over the phone line and initially whenever someone called the house, it would kick me off the internet. After a while, AOL changed it to have caller ID and a confirm or deny option under it. Whenever I saw Mary calling, which was very often, I would deny her call. My parents didn't have cell phones at this time, so she had no way to go around this lovely little feature until she confronted my parents about it. I played the, oh, I thought that pop-up was just an ad card. Parents thanked me for the laugh later because she had been so pissed. Fast forward about another eight years, and I'm talking to my mom when she brings up that she finally confirmed that my grandmother, grandfather, had actually screwed us out of roughly 50 grand when they helped sell our first house. Grandmother accidentally let it slip that they had actually sold it for about 65k instead of the 15k they initially told my mom it went for. She was saying how it was going to be hard for them now because they had just sold their last rental home that they were using as an income source over the years, and the first rental they sold had lasted this long, which was actually our first house. I had joined the military soon after learning this and moved across country, so I don't have the full details on what happened following that, but to summarize from what I learned from my parents. Mary lost her job due to her firm being sued into bankruptcy due to fraud. Surprise there. She moved into my grandmother's house soon after and spent the following year job searching. Not much luck due to her previous firm situation. Terry lost her job due to layoffs and the bank foreclosed her house. She chose to just up and leave it without paying anything, so she couldn't go back to a normal solid job because they'd apparently go after her money if she did. Surprised face here. She spent the following years jumping from place to place until she spoke with my dad. More on that in a minute. Grandmother had Mary move in with her to help maintain her mortgage after my grandfather passed 
about a year after I joined the military. They ended up renting out the third bedroom to a college student, since they both weren't able to afford the rent and other expenses. Mary would constantly call my mom, demanding that my dad and her should help with paying my grandmother's rent and for groceries. My parents simply said that she got enough from them when they sold their house, and that they won't see a cent more from them. A little over a year ago, Terry had finally came to them asking for about 20 k to buy a house out of state. A small mobile home, similar to our first house, but a major fixer-upper. My dad wasn't fond of her, but he was more lenient when it came to her over Mary, so he said he'd think about it. When I heard about it, I highly protested the idea, explaining that she's the type that'll take the money and then constantly bring up excuses on why she'd be late to pay them back, a prediction that became fact not even two months later. Apparently, my dad had also figured this into his plan and explained it to me a few months later. After my grandmother and Mary decided to finally move out and live with Terry, my dad had apparently loaned the money to my aunt, but he also signed ownership of the house she had bought with the money he loaned her. Long story short, if she doesn't pay, all three of them are on the streets. So my dad loopholed them into basically having them buy their non-existent balls years later. I really like your dad. Sounds like a very intelligent man. And this is why we believe in karma, kids.